for a few weeks. Now, one was right in the middle of a, you know, LCBO parking lot. And you see the mother goose nesting and the male is just standing vigil protecting it. And there's a gate put by the government, by the city and a sign warning people not to approach it because they can be very um, protective. Anyway, it was so cute. And early spring. All right, everybody. Hey, everyone. It's Ray. It's life and vibe. Let me bring myself up here. And I just wanted to go back and take a little look at this story that Chantel Foodie Beauty gave about these Canadian geese. And just take a moment. You know how I am. I like to look and investigate and see if there's actually a kernel of truth. Um, so we are going to make sure I get my disclaimers out. And we're just going to show those because I don't want to get in any trouble with Foodie getting her striking my channel because I'm using her content. So just to let everybody know, this is for fair use. Uh, make sure I get my disclaimers out here. You know, we're gonna, we may roast her a little bit. That's just, you know, me being sarcastic. And uh, it's the lowest form of humor. We know that. And then trigger warning. Uh, this video contains probably sensitive material, I would say, because she's going to tell a very sad story about those two Canadian geese you just saw there. So anyway, if you do like this type of content, I always say just subscribe. A lot more people watch me than subscribe, and it really does help the algorithm. I know we all say it. It's cheesy, but it's just true. So like, comment, you know, all the good stuff. Anyway, so before we get into the whole sort of Canadian goose wild story arc that foodie just went through we're going to go over to doctor's radio and listen to a little bit about their episode about lying i apologize for the pause there i had to think for a second so we were listening to this the other day but this is a little bit further along in that uh presentation on the psychiatry show on doctor radio and i'm going to play a little bit about what they say about lying and the reason being is that Foodie Beauty, obviously, let me take me down small, uh, has a history of just, you know, all the stories that she tells are for, you know, just literally a story time. And so I didn't think it was cool to come out with a story about this poor goose. And I was thinking, you know, obviously the government has put out all those barricades trying to protect the geese and they're outside that wine and spirit shop and i would think a lot of canadians are aware not to give them you know food you shouldn't though chantelle only learned that the other day with the seagulls <laughs> which was a shock because she's 40 um anyway i just kind of want to listen let you listen to this thing about the lying uh pathological lying and then I want you to hear the story she's about to tell about what happened to this goose. And then we're going to actually go check some local newspapers and some things to see if anything of that happened. Because I can promise you, I went to Facebook. I didn't see anything. And I would have thought if something like that happened, there would be people talking about it. Otherwise, how did she hear the story? Where did she hear the story from? Where's the receipt that, of where she heard the story from? So she needs to come out with receipts. That's what I'm saying. Otherwise, the story is just a game, uh, just lying, just coming online and lying for no reason. It's just wild. Sorry. All right, let's listen to these smart people. Hello, and welcome back to The Psychiatry Show. I'm your host, Dr. Jessica Stern, and my guest today is Dr. Drew Curtis, professor of psychology and director of the Counseling Psychology Doctoral and Master's Programs at Angela State University. And we're having a conversation about pathological lying. If you have any questions for us, please feel free to give us a call at 877-NYU-DOCS. That's I promise these doctors, I have I would love them to let me know what they think about someone like Chantel Marie Sorot. <laughs> I would love to have an actual, oh, goodness. You know, obviously, this is not 
diagnosing anybody. This is just for entertainment and education purposes only. I am a licensed registered nurse here in the United States with a close to 15 years in practice. So I am a medical professional. And that's why we kind of listen to other things because we have to deal with these types of patients regularly in the healthcare system. 877 You can also send us an email at docs at SiriusXM.com. That's D-O-C-S at SiriusXM.com. Speaking of which, we actually do have an email. We have an email that's come in from Robin. Robin says this, if you know for a fact someone is lying, but they will not admit it, and they are adamant in sticking with that lie, how do you deal with that? Dr. Curtis, what are your thoughts about this? Well, yeah, one of the things we had talked about earlier was... Uh... And this is something we really have to listen to, because Foodie Beauty is sticking to, to the lie of the sciatica, okay? She said now the doctor has said it has gone away and so forth. So I always feel like the person who sent that question in was sending in the question on behalf of the girl world community. All right, keep going smart, doctor. Um, you know, function. And so I think, it, you know, try if you can, I think the situation's open, so I'm not sure all the specifics or nuances. I, I think implicit in the the question is, <clears throat> excuse me, is a desire to to discover the truth or really to elicit a confession. So maybe if the question is, how do you, how do you do that? Um, you know, most individuals who, who lie, lies are discovered often by evidence or a confession. And I think kind of what we're talking. And with Pudi, we tend to try to go on evidence because she, she does occasionally confess. Like she finally confessed at one point at the end of one of her lives that she had never received an official diagnosis for sciatica. So she could say she hear the story about the Canadian goose is hearsay, but who did you hear it from? Where did you read it? How how you? You're not all, you're not involved in the community. Anyway, keep going. They're quite interesting because you're going to hear the story she's going to tell. And let me know if you think in the comment sections if the story about the goose was true. Talking about earlier that if you can model behaviors of, of honesty and how to have hard conversations, things that open up trust between people, I think if you can do that or you have a history of doing that, that's typically going to be a lot more inviting where someone is willing to share the truth, knowing that that may be painful or may be hard to hear. And I think if if you can communicate to that other individual that, you know, even if it's painful, or even it might, if it's painful for both individuals or one individual that you're willing to actually engage in that conversation, I think that's going to lend itself. I, I can't say it will guarantee that someone will share that information. Uh, but many times, you know, evidence or individuals when kind of painted into a corner, pushed into a corner, about whether or not they're lying. Usually that's how it'll come out. They'll confess or admit, you know, if someone's been, um, you know, if, if they're in a monogamous relationship and express. I don't know if Foodie ever has that capacity. But anyway, I thought we'd just take a little bit about, you know, being painted in a corner. That often seems to be something that Foodie seems to find herself in. So, yeah, let's just, I wanted, I also have another, I think, live or another episode where I think it was a live that I went over that pathological line. I'll put that link up in the description box somewhere. Okay, let's get back over to Chantel. And this time we're going to actually hear the story that she decides to tell us about these poor geese. I don't know why she came out with this story. It was at the start of a live. It's it's morbid. I'm going to warn people that it is a morbid story. So if you are sensitive to stories where, you know, animals come to harm, then I would click away. But this is what she decided to share. Okay? Let's listen. And you, I just also want you to remember the location of where the geese were. Okay? They were by a wine and spirit store. So listen to how she can't even get the facts right about where the geese are. Just listen. That's why I always talk about her in pathological line. It's wild. Just tell, say I'm going to make up a story. You know? Apparently the one goose that I showed you near the like near Harvey's, 
it was in a fast food drive through it died because apparently like it's right at the end of a drive through window right so people probably thinking oh i'm gonna feed the bird well they fed them french fries and it freaking choked and died i don't know what happened to the eggs i don't the other geese around the city are okay but like it's one of those things where it's like the person probably didn't know like i didn't really know like i thought birds just eat anything like i feel Chantel recently was called out for having fed pizza crust to seagulls in a park. And her aunt let her know that you're not supposed to feed the wildlife, you know, bread because it can expand, I believe, is, or they can eat too much. It can expand. It's just not good. It's human food, basically. <laughs> They're not supposed to eat human food, okay? It's human-grade food. I don't know about the expansion thing. That might be a wives tale but it's human grade it's not good for them basically and she was called out and now she's got this very odd story that somebody gave a french fry to a goose now there was no evidence in that video before because you saw there was there's like a little goose that sat there that she went to a, a drive through during that video so it's just odd. Look, the details don't match to whatever the scenario is in that wine and spirits parking lot. By feeding them bread that one time, the pizza. But so don't ever, if you see a goose, if you're in Canada or, or a bird and you don't know what they eat, like I'm guilty of that too. Don't do it. I know. Why would they nest there? Like, find somewhere in nature private. Why would you do that? So I'm so depressed because of that. Sorry to be a bummer, but I, I don't know. So this is probably Chantel, the manipulating malignant narcissist, just in my humble opinion, because she's not been physically assessed. So this is not a diagnosis, but this is kind of what her behaviors seem to lend themselves to. Certainly worked with patients with this, these, these disorders. Anyway, I just am trying to figure out the purpose of telling this story other than monetary gain. Because that's all she wants is, is her subs to feel bad for her, I guess, in the hopes that she will get people sending her money. Because she's you know, or give her sympathy. I mean, she's just really playing her audience horribly here. Because we're going to take a look in the papers and there's no evidence this story is true. So she just made it up for effect. You saw a bird eat another bird? Yeah, chickens will eat anything. I don't know what happened to the goose. It is so sad. I want to go put a... What do you mean you don't know what happened to the goose? He said it choked on a French fry. And how would somebody know it was a French fry? It just seems a very, you know, significant detail of what the, the goose consumed. I didn't see any French fry or like anything like that in the parking lot next to the little guy at the time. So you're trying to say some other individual supposedly took out this goose for some reason. And just for like sympathy. It's just wild. It's just wild. You are a weird individual, girl. <laughs> a sign on the other areas and be like, don't feed them. Because I don't know, that makes me sick to my stomach. Girl, drinking that tiramisu, uh, Tim Hortons frappuccino thing, which has 33 grams of sugar and 22 grams of fat and i don't even know how many calories i can't remember we we were looking at these the other days and then she's sipping on that sick to your stomach about the goose this is somebody who has the most abhorrent acts of animal cruelty that you can imagine towards her own companion animals so she has allowed her cats to become matted to have their toenails grow so long that they've embedded the pads of the cat's feet. She goes and neglects the litter box. I mean, for months on end, like just doesn't take care of it. She is 
not fixing the cat that she has in Kuwait. It's a cat she just picked up off the streets. There's no evidence the cat has had any vaccinations. The hair is matted. The cat is not cared for. She seems to go through numerous hamsters. She has a history of running over frogs in her car. She hit the, a raccoon with that Kia. She has, I mean, I can't even think of the litany of animal abuses that this woman has committed that are really, really horrific. And she wants to talk about this goose. And it's horrific again because she's using an animal and she's trying to make herself out to be this sympathetic individual when in fact she's just a narcissist. It's all about her. It's attention to her. She wants attention even for a made-up story. It's really sad, actually. And it's like, it's just pure, like, we don't know. Like, like the person probably thought they could eat French fries, you know? Well, it comes to them. Who's victim blaming the goose? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just like, I really wish it didn't nest there. Okay, I have some items I bought today. All right, we don't care about what stuff you bought. It was not even very nice. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I don't care about what she bought. I don't care about what she bought. All right. <laughs> it was stuff that's not anything I would recommend. Okay, so let's just go pop over to the papers real fast and see if we can find out anything about a goose choking on a French fry. Because, you know, Chantel likes to come out with these wild stories. So we're going to go over first to the uh, local paper in Cornwall. Let me make sure all the ads come down. You know how it is when you get into a newspaper. So uh, let's see what the headlines are. Um, the, there's something about a trussie. Um, there's a some, some weapons assaults. There's a pop event coming up. They had the fourth Cornwall Eco Day that draws hundreds to La Maru Park. How come we didn't get to go see that, foodie? They had like, like a ton of people were there. This actually looked like it would have been fun. They had like all these people there and they were planting like trees. A thousand people were there. And they're out like planting tree seeds and stuff. Why weren't you out doing something like this? Look, hundreds of seedlings. You know, that would have been nice to see. You may be out planting a seedling tree, actually adding to your community rather than taking by not paying your taxes and asking for free health care. All right, let's see over here. Let's see. I've been looking for this goose. So let's look for Canadian. I look for goose. Hold on. Let's look for Canadian goose. So I wanted to see, because she seemed to make it, it was like in Cornwall. So I said, what about in Cornwall? What stories about a Canadian goose? I think I even put one in about Canadian goose and French fries. All right. So mm, nothing that seems to bring up anything about that. Let's just look up maybe goose. I mean, what could we find about a goose? Uh, letters to the editor about the eclipse. Uh, yeah, probably to do with the sports team. All right. Interesting. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next paper. Let's take a look at one more newspaper and then we're just going to finish this out because I don't see anything there. And I also went onto Facebook. I'm not sharing my Facebook page, but, uh, I can let you know that the, there was no story on Facebook. <laughs> Let's put it this way. All right. This is the Ontario. So I'm like looking at the whole province of Canada now just to, to make sure to cover my bases. And, uh, you know, obviously it's not front page news that a goose, Canadian goose choked on a French fry, but you would have thought they would be warning people. Okay. Let's keep going. Yeah. Well, no, I don't see anything here. All right, let's do a search, shall we? No, oh, here we go, search ball. Oh, look, Canadian goose, all ready to go. All right, let's go. Let's see. Do we have any stories about a Canadian goose choking on a French fry? Because I would have thought they, you know, would have said something. 
since they have the barricades and stuff, that doesn't seem like they wouldn't. Anything here? No? All right. Well, let's try a, like a wild, like the Cornwall Wildlife page. Wildlife Trust. Let's go over to them and see if they actually, uh, we're going to go into the, the Wildlife Trust here and see if they have anything to do with, are they saying anything about the goose? Protecting Cornwall's wildlife. Here, what wildlife do we have? Species A to C. All right, let's just look at the Canadian goose. I'm sure they have to have the goose here. I'll have the goose. Uh, they're birds. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. All right. I'm just going to put in Canadian goose. All right. Let's see. Let's search. Let's say, say. Here we are. Canada goose. Sorry, it's the Canada goose. No, huh, why do we always call it Canadian? Huh, Canada goose. Okay. All right, here they are. All right. Um, oh, I think this is Cornwall, England. <laughs> I think I'm in the wrong Cornwall. <laughs> I suddenly realized. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm in the wrong Cornwall over here. I went to England by accident. Let me read. Let me, let me stop sharing that one. Let me go back. <laughs> Sorry about that. See, sometimes when you're investigating, uh, I need Cornwall, Canada, though. I was like, why am I not? All right. Am I got any type of uh, the one for, I need one for Canada, though. They had the Canadian wildlife, the wildlife sanctuary. That she went to recently. All right. But it was the one in Cornwall. Hold on. Canada. All right. Yeah. That one. They, they have a special page. The Upper Canada. That's it. The Upper Canada. It was the Upper Canada Migratory. It's this one. It was the Upper Canada that she went to recently. This one. All righty. So let's go to their website. All right. So I got it ready to go. Okay. Let me share the screen. I apologize for that, guys. Hey, you got to see Cornwall, England. All right. So here we go. Parks of St. Lawrence. This is where she went. Uh, did we get to see anything about the wildlife? Like the, the, the goose? <laughs> It looks really nice, though. Nature's lover's paradise, abundant wildlife. How did we never see any of this when she was there? I don't remember seeing any of this when she went to the Upper Canada. Oh, all right, guys. I've kind of, I've kind of darted around and looked at some stuff. I don't see any stories about the goose at all. I think Chantel may have been lying. Anyway. If you do like this type of content, hit the subscribe, leave me a Canadian goose or Canada goose, I should say. Leave me a Canada goose in the chat and uh, we'll see you on the next time.